today's word, Jesus was amazed at him. Luke chapter 7, just one verse we can read together. Go, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such a great faith, not even in Israel. Amen. Let's pray one more time. Father, thank you, Lord God, and bless word and bless people, your beloved children who listen to your word. Father, Holy Spirit, come to them and enlighten our eyes and let us see your glory through this message. Father, please hide me. Only your word spread out to them because this word is yours. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Do you know what that is? It's a Roman. Long, long time ago, it's Rome. Rome was a really tiny state city, city states. And, but the Rome is conquered all the country, the Mediterranean area. What, what is that? They have powerful army like that? Maybe other country, they all have mighty soldiers. Then what make them this mighty country at the time? You know, I was told that when they have battlefield, there is none, no one was killed by an arrow on their back. Even though they have so many arrows and the, the soul wound their body, but no back. Because they never turning back. If commander said go and march, they just march and go and fight. They never returning back. Not like covered. You know, I think that is uh, we call it pistos. That is a sincere. That is faithful. That is faith. Because they obey their commander's order. You know, they are not afraid of their death. Even though they are not afraid of death and died. You know, they, the country victory. But all the people die once, and after that, they have penalty. But you know what? All the believers who believe in Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life. Even though we die, we have an everlasting life. Amen? All right. Amen, amen. You know what? So how much more? We live in kingdom of God. We never turning back to our commander Jesus' order and command because we are his sincere and faithful servant. We need faith on him. Whatever he commands us, march or go and stop. You know, we should obey because we trust him. We call that his faith. In today's word, we found one man, and Jesus was so surprised and shocked by this man's faith. Jesus amazed by his faith. Who is that? And we can read today's word again. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. You know, Jesus was so marveled and shocked and, and amazed by this man. Who is this man? He is, is centurion. He had the servants, so many servants. You know, centurion, um, centurion had 80 men under his command. 80 people. Wow, that is powerful. And at the time, Rome and conquered the Palestine, and they, they rule over the Palestine area. So nobody against Roman soldiers, especially Centurion. He's a powerful man. And whatever he says, so many uh, Jewish people and, and Roman soldiers and obey, he is powerful. But he came to Jesus. See that? Luke chapter 7, 2, and a certain centurion servant who was dear to him and was sick and ready to die. 
You know, he has one servant, so many servants, but one servant, and in Greek word doulos means slave, not just a hired employee. His centurion servant is slave. But he was so dear to him, which means, you know, entimos in Greek word, which means he is valuable. He is respectable. Centurion respect his own slave? He, we, we know his character. Wow, he has good character because he believed that all the human being is from God, an image of God. He respects and honors someone else. Even though he's a slave, he cares his own slaves. He is going to die. He was sick and he called so many doctors and he spent lots of money for him, but no use. But one day he heard the News about Jesus Christ. News of Jesus Christ. You know, this centurion, even though he is not a believer at the time, he really cared how much more we should care of one another. We are dearly brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ. We live in the kingdom of God. So many church families or our brothers and sisters got sick, they called me. Now, my heart is so broken, I, I kneel down and pray for them. You know, Centurion was so desperate. He loved, he, he really loved and cared his own servant. And in his desperation, he heard the Jesus news. And about news of Jesus Christ is his hope. But as a pagan... Uh, except Jewish people are pagan. And pagan, as a foreigner, a pagan, he is not uh, approached, he couldn't approach the Jesus Christ. He asked some of the elders of Jews, uh, and as, hey, hey Jew, elders, please, I, I want to meet Jesus Christ. Because my servant is so sick, he's, he's about to die, please help me. And you know what? And Luke chapter 7 and 3 said, When he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. You know? And, and the elders came to Jesus. Jesus, you know what? He is a wonderful man. Please, you, you, you got to help him. And Jesus heard that, okay, let's go. And then Jesus went with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, you know what? Far away, centurion sent friend to him. Sent from to him. And in, what did he say? That? And friends came to Jesus and say to him, Lord. What did he say that? Lord, not teacher, or, oh, you 30 years old young man, please help my servant. I'm a centurion. I'm a conqueror of your country. Please listen to my word and obey. He didn't say that. He said that what? Lord. He believed that Jesus Christ is God. And he said, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Wow. If I were a centurion, I really want to see Jesus Christ. Maybe get a signature from him. He, he, he's like a famous, right, at the time. Maybe if I see him, even though if I don't, don't know about him, oh, wow, are you a miracle maker? Give me your signature or shake, shake my hands. Or, or I say, good, nice to meet you. Maybe I can say it to him. But he, his response is so weird. For the first time, he asked elders, please, let him come to my house and heal my servant. But after he sent his friends and, and said to Jesus, what? Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Wow. He knew that. Jesus is God. 
who has mighty power and authority. By this Lord, he confessed that Jesus is Lord. And, and, and what did he say that? Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. This is confession who encounter with Jesus God. This is your con supposed to be your confession. I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. Have you ever thought about Moses? And he, he, he saw the burning bush never distinguished. And, he, and this, the words come out of the burning bush, take off your shoes. I am that I am. He kneeled down before God. He couldn't stand it because he's not worthy to stand and meet God. And what about Isaiah? When, when God showed himself to Isaiah, Isaiah said, Woe to me! My lips is filthy. I'm not worthy to see God. He, he's a holy prophet. He said that. What about Paul? When he sees Jesus Christ, the light is so bright in his eye blind. He, he falls down before God. What about John? In Revelation, John used to be lying down with Jesus, and Jesus, you know what? I, they, they, they have wondered what that is. Please let us know. He's very close with Jesus Christ. But after Jesus resurrected, he saw in his vision and dream from God and all the Spirit, he saw Jesus Christ, his mighty God. In, in chapter 1 in Revelation, John lying down like a dead man because he couldn't stand before holy God. This is proper response of all the human beings. What did the centurion say to Jesus? I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. To come to you. Not just, oh, hi, Jesus. How are you? I, I want to see you. Please show, show me. Show my servant your miracle. Heal him. He didn't say that. I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. But, what? But say the word. And my servant will be healed. He kneeled down before Jesus. This, is, this should be us. We should be humble ourselves before God. Only just by word. Just say the word. And my servant will be healed. By just your word. He believed. The power of his word. You know, see that? The sword, double-edged. The word of God is living and active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. That is Hebrews chapter 4, 12. Maybe we can read together. Go. For the word of God is living and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrated even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Amen. Amen. He knows what's, what is the word of God. How, how much care you word of, you, your word of God. Your Bible. The, the preaching on Sunday. And every single day when you open the Bible and, and God want to speak to you. That word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword because it penetrates even to dividing your, your soul, the hiding things and spirit and joint and marrow. It judges thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Then we can kneel down and before the Lord and Lord, I'm not worthy. Please forgive all my sins. You are the one who created a whole universe. You are the one who created me. So Lord, create my soul again. Restore my soul. Revive my soul again. You know, how could he, the centurion, had this kind of faith? 
This is amazing faith he has. Only by word, my servant will be healed. How could he have this wonderful faith? You know, in Israel, the upper, uh, the northern part in Capernaum, um, in there, Jesus Christ has so many miracles happening there. You know, the centurion, actually, he's working place in there. He is, he's ruled over with 80 people, 80 soldiers. And he saw and heard so many Jesus miracles. And he, he th when he heard so many miracles and the word of Jesus Christ, the word, the faith is hearing from hearing, hearing from the Christ of word, Jesus word. And when he saw many, when he heard the many miracles and when he heard Jesus word, and he, in his heart, the little tiny seed of faith in his heart, it grows. Every time when he heard, his faith is grow. And finally, he believed that. That Jesus who performed the miracle, who cares, the, who cares poor, who, who make the blind can see, Jesus Christ, he's a living God. And he could say to Jesus, what? Lord. This is amazing. And Luke chapter 7, a said that, For I also, um, also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, hey, go. And he goes. And to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. Do you know what that means? Lord Jesus, I am your servant like 80 my people. I am one of your servants. So say whatever you say. My servant will be healed. You know, this confession is so amazing. Whatever you say, I believe that my, my servant and sickness is healed. And I believe that you are God. He's pagan. He, he never studied the Bible. He just listened. He, he just heard the gospel. That's all. But he has good faith. You know what? Verse 7. I mean, chapter 7 and 9. And what is that? When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd, Jesus was so surprised and said to all the people who follow Jesus and say to them, I say to you, listen, listen, I have not found such a great faith. Wow. Not even in Israel. In this Israel, he is a great faith. He is the most great faith on me. This is so praise. Jesus praise him. Jesus is so amazed. You know, when Jesus is amazed, and his disciples are also amazed by Jesus. But a little bit different, maybe totally different than this centurion. You know, Jesus' disciple, have you heard this story, right? And, and uh, when, when they are um, sailing with, with a boat with disciples and Jesus and suddenly storming coming. Okay, we can read uh, Matthew chapter 8, 23. And now when he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest Storming ro arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. He was asleep, Jesus asleep, and, and all the expert fishermen, they know, they knew about the, the ocean and the waves and boat, but they're so scared. They're waking up his own master. And then he, the disciples came to him and awoke him and saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Exactly the same word, the Lord. Sent you and say, Lord, just a word only. 
He trusts Jesus. But all the disciples who are always following him for three years, and they watching and listening, and, and, and they saw the performing Jesus miracle. They eat with Jesus Christ. They hanging around with him and giggling together and sat together, teared together. They say the same word, Lord, Lord, save us, save us. But he said to them, why are you fearful, all you of letter faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. You know, Jesus said, oh, you of little faith. What did Jesus say to Centurion? I never seen this such a great faith in this Israel. What did he say? Jesus said to his own disciples who have three years, they come together and eat together and work together. Oh, you of little faith. But they all say, Lord, the Lord. What is the difference between them? Faith. Are you truly faith on Jesus Christ? Even though we worship together in here and there nowadays. But they don't, some of them really have good faith, some of them not. Faith is from the Word of God. If you're getting to know the knowledge of Jesus Christ, what He has done for us, and is is redemption for the before the all the creation and God has planned for us and God elect us and even though we we commit a sin and we will die and separate from God and God planned to send his own son Jesus Christ and every time we walk away from God and we rebel to God and God sent his angels and prophets and say to, the, say to us, I love you, come to me, come to me, come to me. And they never come to Jesus and reject, reject and reject. Finally, Son of God who became human being like us and shed all the blood on the cross. Every time, when, when you read the Bible, when you listen to the word of God, word of God wow, God's love is so amazing. With your tears, you have faith in Him. I want all of us have faith, good faith like the centurion. If you have good faith, Holy Spirit gives you power. What kind of power? Power to we can pray to God. Power we can use the name of Jesus Christ. The power we can apply the blood of Jesus Christ to the sick. We can dispel out the demons by the name of Jesus Christ. We have the power to pray. And if you have good faith, what about Matthew? Mark chapter 11, 24. Mark chapter 11, 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe. What is that? Believe. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, everyone same, everyone exactly same as this first, first sentence. Everyone, okay, Lord, I pray and pray and pray and pray. I lit the kindle, the candles, and I walk and pray to you. And when I see the beautiful sun and clouds and I pray to you, yeah, everyone pray. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray. But what is the difference between believe in Jesus Christ who will listen? Or just you mumbling so many words and pray and pray and pray and pray. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. Believe. If you have a belief, you have power to serve God. Serve Jesus Christ. Do you now serve Jesus Christ? Or you want to be served by Jesus? 
Do you really have faith to serve your Lord Jesus Christ? Romans chapter 14, 18 says, Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. I want our culture and great church, all the family, I want to serve our Lord God and worship God. You know what? Finally, John chapter 12, 26 said, If anyone serves me, Jesus said that, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my Father will honor. Amen. If you have faith, you have power by Holy Spirit, you can pray, you can serve God, and also you can serve other people. With that power, you can share the glorious gospel to others. Amen. So we need the faith. How can I, we, how can I get this such a great faith? Listen to the Word of God. Read the Bible. This is, this is a key. To have, you have power. You know, if you really have a good faith on Jesus Christ, you're waiting and longing for Jesus coming back. Because you already know that Jesus loves you. You believe that Jesus, when Jesus comes back, he welcome me. But if you have no faith, if you have no knowledge about the Bible, you're afraid of Jesus coming back. He might be punish me. I don't like disasters. But when you read Revelations, when you read the Bible, when you, when you know the Word of God, you have good faith on Him. He loves me so much. So when Jesus comes back, I'm so longing and yawning for His coming. Philippians chapter 3.20 said, But our citizenship is in heaven. Yes, you have dual citizenship. Maybe triple citizenship you have. American citizenship, Canadian citizenship, maybe Korean citizenship, and most, all, of, all of the citizenship, what is the best one? Your citizenship in heaven. Amen. If you believe that, your citizenship in heaven. Amen. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this, sir, this uh, centurion it is a really good man and good faith. He really cared his, his own slaves and servant. His servant was healed. Because Je Jesus said his word, be healed. And he healed. Amen. So you know what? Centurion is so happy to hear, see his servant well. I really want to see all our church family well by his word. I want our church family happy to see your, you, your, the person who you pray, whoever in hospital or wherever in discouraged by so many things, you pray for them. Then Jesus' word, you will see that they are well. Then you will see so glad and those who were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well, who had been sick. This is the word of God this morning. Good faith. Do you really want to surprise Jesus by faith? You want to make Jesus amazed and marveled by your faith? And read the Bible. Meditate his word. You know, meditation of the word meaning is loving God. Who meditate? Who meditate? You know, lovers, two, two beautiful couple, they meditate all the time. Oh, I want to see him. I want to see her. I want to meet her. I want to eat together with her. I, wa I want to spend time with her. Even though you walk away and go home and use phone and how are you? You just, you just, you just left. You just said, "Go home." You know, just one minute or five minutes. How are you? Because they want to get together and meditate and think of them, even dreams. What is that? 
That is meditation. What about your meditation of the Bible? You meditate the God. Because all the word of God is show Jesus Christ. So you meditate Jesus Christ whom you love. During the whole of the meditation time, during the whole of the reading the Bible, it shows them, I love you, Lord. I love God because I meditate you. I think of you all on. With that faith, God was so pleased and God was so surprised by your faith. I hope all our church family has that faith. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. So I want you to think about today's word uh, about the centurion. And he really, uh, um, non-believers, but when he heard the Jesus news and gospel, he getting to know about Jesus Christ. Finally, his confession said to Jesus is Lord. And even disciples, they say, Lord. We all, culture and great church members, we all say, Jesus, Lord. To the death, the death of the Lord saying is so different. Someone has really deep, great, great faith. Someone has just shallow and little faith. But this is time. Our faith on God should be grown through the word of God. Then you can say only, Lord God, to say word. So in this moment, pray for yourself first. And then pray for the sick. Ask Lord Jesus, Lord God, to say word to him. Heal them. Heal him. Heal her. Help him. Help her. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, 하늘아버지 시간에 기도합니다. 하나님 사랑하는 우리 귀한 성도들의 삶 가운데 오늘 백부장의 믿음을 통하여 하나님 믿음이 무엇인지 볼수 있는 귀한 시간 주셔서 감사합니다. 우리의 마음 속에 참으로 주님 믿는다 하면서도 온전한 믿음대로 살지 못하고 참으로 하나님 내 마음대로 나를 위한 믿음을 가지고 살아갈 때가 얼마나 많은지 모릅니다. 주님을 정말 진실로 사랑하며 주님과 함께 동행하여 살아가는 하나님의 귀한 성도들이 살게 되게 하시고 이 말씀을 통해 던 주님 앞에 온전히 설수 있는 모든 각장 리처치 성도들이 될수 있도록 우리를 불러주셔서 영광 가운데 찬양 가운데 예배 가운데 우리 주님만 높여주길 바랍니다. 감사합니다. 주님. 감사합니다. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word this morning. Through this centurion faith, Father, you praise him. I never ever sin. Is such a great faith in Israel. Father, we want to hear from our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, joy has good faith. Father God, encourage all our church family in these hard times and let us focus on Jesus Christ in this darkness. Then from the word, your light shine. Not even our house, not even our home and family, but also all the world. Bless our culture and great church families and all the people who listen and hear and join this worship together. Thank you, Father. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of Father God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. All forever and ever. Everyone says, Amen, Amen. All right, God bless you. It's almost um, more than it's 10, 10 Sundays, but I believe that God is so good. God always provides good provisions for your life. Okay, then see you next Sunday. God bless you. Bye.